Welcome to D. Thomas Fine Miniatures here in Hastings on Hudson. Tonight we have a reading. It's The 68 Rooms by Mary Ann Moore. We'll begin with the author's note. At a very young age, I started going to the Art Institute of Chicago with my mother. She was a painter who loved the museum and I was her youngest child. Often she would take me on the train into the city for the day. It always felt like an adventure. She loved the Impressionist landscapes. I loved the Thorn Rooms. I think my mother imagined herself in those faraway landscapes. I imagined myself in the perfect miniature rooms. Like our heroine in the story, Ruthie, I still get a feeling in my stomach whenever I enter them. The magic has not gone away. In writing this story, I have included characters both real and imaginary. Of course, Mrs. Thorne was a real person who traveled all over the world and bought miniatures wherever she found them. When her collection became large enough, she began to create period rooms that she wanted to be used for educating the public about historic places and interiors. She made most of the rooms in the 1920s and 1930s. The Art Institute holds an archive of materials having to do with the rooms, but I learned most of the documentary facts from the beautiful catalog of the rooms. This is where I read that Mrs. Thorne bought many miniature pieces from a little shop in Paris. This fact, which you can read about in the catalog, set my imagination in motion. Christina of Milan, is a real figure from history, and a copy of a famous portrait of her by Hans Holbein hangs in room E1. She had a long life, and some contemporary members of Europe's royal families are her descendants. There is a book on a desk in room E1. I imagine that book to be Christina's. The access doors that our heroine, Ruthie, and our hero, Jack, used to enter the corridor behind the rooms are visible in Gallery 11. I have taken the liberty of assuming that a corridor runs behind all the rooms. I imagine the ledge my two characters run along, as well as the boxes of catalogs, buckets, duct tape, and air vents that they find and use. So as you can see, I have imagined a lot. Characters, magic objects, time travel. But so did Mrs. Thorne. She first imagined and then created these 68 rooms from start to finish. When asked why she never included human figures in the rooms, she answered that she could not make them as realistic as the objects, that it would ruin the illusion. Instead, she relied on her imagination and expected everyone who viewed the rooms to do the same. I think Mrs. Thorne knew that imagination can be magic. 